Painting has always been a way that I can work through whatever it is that's happening in my life, even in huge transitions, like moving from another country. I always had solace in that space that I could create for myself. I was 10 when I moved to the U.S. from Costa Rica. It wasn't an easy transition for me. It definitely was very lonely and it was very confusing. I spoke very little English. I didn't know anything about the U.S. I didn't know anything about the cultural differences and I had an upbringing that was very, very different than what I ended up coming to. And in retrospect, I, I don't know that there would have been much that I could have done as a child to really make that easier for myself and having, having the capacity to create things and having that desire to create things is what really kept me in a place of play, which is where I needed to be. One of the things that helped me cope the most was just having art supplies around, was being able to sit in my room alone with a brush and just make things up and invent things out of nowhere. That felt like a place of power when I didn't have any power. Throughout my life, anytime I have experienced any difficulty or transition, I always go back to this place of making to nourish myself, but also to feel empowered in that place of expression. I always had solace in that space that I could create for myself. I never had any formal training. I just um, have always been painting and I've always been developing. So I know that there is a long lineage that has led to the types of things that I'm making now, but it's not rooted in academic training or in a traditionalist way of working. And I treasure that. At any given time, I have anywhere between 50 to 200 paintings going on at a time. You can see when you look at a collection that they all have some themes or colors that tie them together. And this is something that just emerges as a part of the process. I don't design. Instead, I have a daily practice of sitting with the work with intention and that intention is typically just to open up whatever is happening through me in that moment. I will choose one material or motif or idea or something that I want to work with that feels like an expression of that moment that I'm in and I will pass that idea through multiple pieces of paper that are part of a stack. Once it starts to emerge and it starts to fill a page and really look like it has its own set of directions and, and themes, I will sometimes take those themes and push them forward or backward or give them a little bit more of a highlight. But even that part of the process is this very unconscious reaction to what is in front of me. My environment has always been a big part of the creative choices that I make. I don't think it's possible to remove that element from the things that I am making. Seeing both the ocean and the forest and having lush mountains around me affects and impacts the choices that I'm making in terms of color and shape. It's not so much just about the specific colors that I might use, but also just the soundscape, the experience of being connected to living things, of watching these spaces change and evolve over time. When I'm passing through these papers and I'm giving each of them a layer in a particular color or particular motif, that experience reminds me a lot of even growing my own garden and tending to my own garden, watering every day. Sometimes if I'm working with water media, I will just pass through a stack of 20 papers with just water. And in that same way, I can diffuse some edges and some corners and very incrementally and slowly create changes in this work. And then one day I'll turn around and there will be a stack of finished paintings 
And there's no, there's no way for me to time exactly when that's going to happen or for me to make conscious choices about when that's going to happen. It's something that just occurs by nature of allowing. I don't think that there are very many contexts where we're given a space to do that kind of work, that work of just allowing things to move through, whether it is your intuitive thinking or whether it is your emotional states. When I am able to get there, when I can have a painting session where I do really find that place of flow and I look back at the things that I've made, I can see things about what I was feeling or thinking that I couldn't see while I was in that state. And I think there's always a surprise at the end of that process where I'm able to really look at something that is now outside of me that was once inside of me and find a way to label it so that I can understand my own cognitive path and where I have been spending my time and my energy. And I think, at least for me, having a creative practice that is this entrenched in, in my mind and what my mind is doing gives me a lot of grounding and peace. I can trust myself to be able to find a path through whatever it is that I am experiencing. That feels really powerful to me, to have a space where I feel like even if I'm going to be surprised, even if I don't know what it is that is coming, I trust my own creative capacity. I think of intuition as just the sum of the hidden knowledge that's within all of us. I feel most connected to that part of myself when I am painting, partly because I trust the core knowledge that I have that allows me to think about things like balance and movement and color theory without really thinking about it. When I call myself an intuitive painter, what I'm referring to is that I am centering that part of myself in the work. For me, being an intuitive abstract painter means putting that place that is beyond me, that is unconscious to me while I am working at the center of all of that that I am building over time. And so when I consider my lineage of work and I retrospectively look back at the things that I have made, I see a progression of taking things from the unconscious into the conscious 